had any clue when we went more than one foot in front of the I'd run into another one just in the car. I put a leg on the Tonight, this is just pretty much an informational meeting. I said, we need information from you, you need information from us. These are technical, you ever up there, I'll let them answer the technical questions. I'm here to do the easy stuff. Uh, could have had a town hall meeting tonight. We had a uh, settled with Brandon's president. That's our public service commissioner. Donald Trump canceled on us for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my, ha my hair ain't that good. No. <laughs> that, so they, this is Brandon Preston. He's the Northern District Public Service Commissioner. How many terms does this be your third term? Yeah. He's running for third term. Kirby McCray is our uh, town engineer. He can answer technical questions on his end. Uh, we've got the utility clerk that gets down to money issues. She'll probably have to answer that. So we'll get started. First off, we don't really have any roads right now picked. That we're going to go down or not go down. So we're open. We're going to be dealing with some, probably some borrowed money and probably some grant money. So we'd like to furnish each and every one of you yes. Realistically, maybe, maybe not. We don't know yet. So that's why we need you here. We're going to put every one of you, one of you folks on a map, a little dot. We're going to see who's got the most interest. Then we'll probably give those folks a letter. I don't know if we'll send you a letter or have you come back. But we operate under a certificate from the Public Service Commission. It's called a certificated area. We really run from Iuka City limits all the way just about south of the trace, south of that's Trace a little. Nearly to the Alabama line and to the waterway. That's our area that we can legally serve without going through an application process with the commission office. So I think that's pretty much what I meant to tell you. Other than that, we'd like to, you know, like I said, we'd like to give everyone natural gas. Uh, we're, the price I've heard of free buy, we're about a third of the price right now of propane. Probably we're going to be close to half the price of electricity. I haven't done the figures on that. I don't know if engineers are like or not. The last time I did it was about half. That's when natural gas was, was selling for about 10 or $12. Now our price is around the mid eights, eight and a quarter, eight fifty. Last month is like around eight fifty. So if you take uh, there's a multiplier, you may can tell them that easier than I can. It's roughly eleven percent. If you say propane times eleven percent, roughly, that's the price of propane versus our eight and a quarter. So we're roughly a third of the price. That means money in your pocket. 
So we'll get on a little bit with the meeting. I'll let Commissioner Preston get up. If you've got any questions, just ask them, raise your hand. We'll recognize you, ask them. Uh, and we'll pitch in some things on and off. So as he's talking, just come up with something, just raise your hand. It's an open meeting. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Uh, that's the first time I've ever stood in for Donald Trump. So I <laughs> know <laughs> right so so my hair ain't that good. Your hair's not that good. I will work on it. Uh, thank y'all for coming out. Uh, this this <laughs> meeting tonight is really about trying to make sure that uh, folks in your area get natural gas service. It's uh, the mayor laid it out pretty clear, and we've seen these numbers time and time again throughout the 33 counties in the northern district that I represent. Uh, it's the same thing in Tallahassee County as it is Dishmingo County, and that's this. If we do anything, uh, local government, state government working together with you to bring down your cost to live, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about here. You can't make it through a winter without heat. You can't make it through the summer days we've got without air conditioning. It's that simple. You can, but you'll be moving. Uh, and sometimes you can't from a health, from a health perspective. We went through last year in Mississippi the coldest winter we've had on record in 30 years. You take that and you factor in the issue that propane prices went through the sky and you had a real culmination of the coldest winter where you're naturally going to use more or whatever you're heating your house with. And the price of what most people in rural parts of Mississippi use to heat their homes went through the sky. Uh, so we've been on a mission my office and, and we this is I uh, can't tell you how many things <coughs> like this we've held to try to go out and bring natural gas out in the areas that need it. Because it's real simple. You gotta have it, number one, you gotta have somebody say one. Number two, if we can lower your cost, I'll go back to this the cost of living, just what it takes to get by and we can bring down less uh, and or bring make sure you're spending less of your money on something like that, we ought to be trying to do it. The figures I've seen that show kind of constantly about natural gas versus propane at the highest cost is sometimes 25, 30% uh, is what the cost of natural gas is. So you're saving 70 to 75%. That'd be a better way to say it. You're saving 70 to 75%. Um, best example, Mayor, that I've ever given on this is when we were able to get working with the city of Pontotoc carry natural gas out to a little community called Takapola. I don't know if y'all know where Takapola is at. It's on the Lafayette, Pontotoc County line. We went out there, stood at Pontotoc, working just like what Mayor Tennyson was trying to do here in New Shemingo. We were able to bring it out to 120 houses. A little lady came out, a retiree, reminded me of my grandmother. Uh, she was living on a fixed income, uh, worked her whole life, and just brought a social security check. That's, that's life. That's where people are. And uh, she came out and she told me that she paid $1,000 that month for a heating bill. 1000 bucks. So me and Mayor Pontotoc, Mayor Stafford, got out a piece of paper. We did a figure that she paid $250 that month to give them back of gas. Now, if we can help save people that kind of money, we ought to be trying to do it. And that's what the city of Tishomingo was trying to work on and bring to us that we could look at. Of course, uh, We'll be sitting looking at some of this like the court. So I can't go in and say, oh, yes, absolutely, we'll approve it. I can't say that today. We don't know what's going to buy. But what I do want to try to do is explain to you the benefits of trying to get this work done, if it can work. And secondly, to look at uh, kind of the process that we're going to have to go through. The city will have to make certain filings with us and once they figure out the route in which to pay for this. They can request certain things from us to look at and we know that there may be some involvement in borrowing money, some grant money, as the mayor said, uh, to come in and try to put the lines out there. It's just expensive to run gas lines. And so the key point, if you don't leave this meeting without hearing anything else we say, the key point is if you want gas and we've got your name, but your neighbor is not here, or somebody you go to Sunday school with lives on the same road as you is not here, <coughs> pick up the phone and call them and tell them we need to get their address to the town of Tishomingo so they can put them on the map. Here's why. Mr. Kirby <coughs> may write and tell us, I, just I guess, there may be some road just going to take $25 worth of gas lines to get down to serve. If there's only one house we're going down there to serve, what's the chance of them getting gas at $25? The mayor won't let me do that. Slim and none and <laughs> slim by the They ain't no way to do it. But, if there's 10 houses on that road, it 
makes it a heck of a lot more doable. The interest of the people that want to get gas is going to drive really and truly where these lines go at the end of the day. Uh, there may be places they got mapped out today that nobody signs up once. They say, forget that, we're going this other area. We've got to hear, and they've got to hear from the citizens who want the gas, where they want it, where they live. That's going to help the planning process. Then they can figure out what it's going to cost to get it out there. Now, we all know that Rome wasn't built today, and this, this is going to take a little while. But you don't never get anything done if you don't take that first step. And that's what we're trying to get done tonight is to arm y'all with the information to know that the city is willing to try to work. We're willing as an agency to look at anything they file and try to, to work with them uh, to, to assure the public interest gets met and to try to work with folks. But it all comes down to how many people want to get gas and how are we going to pay for getting it done. There's some grant money involved and available, but there's probably going to have to be some borrowing involved and, and all of that has to be looked at. We can't even get to that second base till we get the first base, the first base saying how much interest is out there and what's all, uh, what's all going to be involved. Uh, there is big benefits in getting this done. It makes your property more valuable. If you're looking to sell, some of you probably ain't looking to sell, but if you ever thought about it, uh, it makes your property more valuable. But it gives you another option. And I want to be clear, too, about my comments about propane. We're not against propane dealers at all. I'm not against them 100%. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And your local propane dealers, I want you to be clear about this, your local propane dealers are not at fault when the prices go through the sky. No different than the local store is when gas goes up because the tanker in Saudi Arabia went, you know, had a problem in the, in the city, had a problem in the city. They're, that's not their fault. But the, the fact of it is, if, if you're left with no options, you don't have an option to save money. You can't hook up the natural gas if the gas line's not coming down your road. So we're trying to start from the beginning, first base, to try to get this done. And I know the city's working to try to pull it together. We're glad to help and glad to be here tonight to try to help explain anything I can maybe help explain about our process and what they'll have to go through uh, to get these approvals. It's not uh, a long process, but it is one uh, that we have to look at. But we, we're encouraging, when I met with the mayor before, we're encouraging cities to do this, to think outside the box, to try to grow their natural gas system where it makes sense. Because uh, in the poorest state in the United States of America, if we can save people $750 a month, on a heat bill, we all be doing it. It's just that simple. It's just that's just plain as one month, one and two. And in the poorest state of the United States of America, where a dollar for a utility bill hurts the average family, worse than it hurts the average family in Tennessee and Georgia and Arkansas and Missouri and Texas and you name it, then my job and our job is to be doing everything we can to bring those costs down, not to escalate and to give you more options. I've said it a thousand times. People living in the most rural parts of Mississippi deserve the same level of services as a governor living in the governor's mansion in downtown Jackson, Mississippi. We, I mean, it's just, it's all right. You should not be discriminated against because you live in a rural area. We didn't get in this mess overnight. We didn't get, and we're not gonna get out of it overnight as far as everybody not having natural gas or internet or whatever the, the issue is. But the question is, are we working on it? And that's what we're doing here tonight. The best thing you can do to help the mayor, to help Kirby, to help me to help this effort and help yourself <coughs> is to make sure if you don't have a neighbor here that you contact them. If you've got a cousin that lives on the road, if you've got kin folks that live in the area, every name of somebody that wants to get natural gas is going to help drive where those lines go and how quick we can get this done. Uh, it's real simple. The more folks paying in, the cheaper it is on everybody. And so we need your help in getting the word out you can simply call the town hall, I think, just give the name and address probably uh, of what's involved. Once, and Mayor, I'm going to speak out of turn, and you tell me to show you up. Go ahead, go but I think once we kind of look and see, <coughs> once we see how many red dots are on this map, then we'll probably come back to the second meeting to discuss here's how much it's going to cost per house, or here's what's going to all be involved. Uh, we'd all be standing up here telling you a story tonight if we said it's going to cost you $500 a house to hook up or $5 a house. We don't know. We just don't know. But we're trying to make a good faith effort to run those numbers down and get you an answer of what exactly it's going to cost to get this done uh, at, at a period. So we, 
you know, if you've got people that aren't here tonight, think I'll town hall tomorrow. The quicker we get those in, the quicker we're gonna be able to come back and say, here's where the starting place is. Here's where the first mile is. Here's how we're gonna to try to uh, to get that done. And so uh, from our part, we're glad to help. Uh, you can, of course, call our office with any type of issue related to this, and we're glad to try to help. But we think it's best to run these addresses through with the town of Tishomingo, let them know so they can get it to Mr. McRae, and then they can begin to put things together and look at it, and then we come back with a subsequent meeting uh, to try to get this done. We can make it happen. I mean, we've seen this happen in other towns. I told you about Taco Polo. Uh, it's a good example. It can be done. It's just going to take some work. And it's going to take a little leg work, a little elbow grease, but we can we can get this done if there is a level of interest and people that want to get uh, gas to the house. Then it's going to, it's going to make a big difference. So, any any questions for me? One thing you just talked about was the more people signed up, and hopefully you understood this, the price of gas comes down. So the more gas we sell, the cheaper the gas is. Just remember that. So that's why you saying see your neighbor. Uh, anyone else on the road, down the road, it's not your neighbor. Two or three miles down the road, there's a bunch of houses between there. Contact. Because the more people we have, the cheaper the gas is. So when you sell gas, we got 300 people we're selling gas to, then all of a sudden we got 500 people. The price of gas goes down. <coughs> we have now about 400, isn't it? 400 meters right now, close to it. So if we can increase that to, say, 550, 600, I don't know what, I'm just picking a number. The gas is going down, and that's for everybody. For the, for the new customers too, that's y'all, new customers. And if there are any upfront costs related to new customers, <coughs> if it's that cost to share it among 100 people, right. it's one cost, but if share it amongst 200 people, it's less. And uh, you know, now is kind of the time that we got to, that we're not in a, we're not in the winter. So we're not gonna, you know, we, we, we've got time now to kind of look and see and make sure we're, uh, cultivate and get everybody out there that wants to be interested and we get as many of these things as we can get because it's going to help everybody in the end. Uh, again, the key thing you only should take away from this so is this is an opportunity for you to lower your cost of living. It is just that simple. It is just that simple. I, I said this about those folks talk to that little lady. My grandma was so fancy. It's Reeves Manufacturing in Nolan for 42 years. No retirement, no health insurance, no nothing. And I bet you in your mind you think of a hundred people who live within a twenty mile radius right here just like that. Through a social security check and that's it. Worked their whole life, did everything right, no big retirement, no golden parachutes like these folks in Wall Street, they just make it. And when you make it when you're drawing eight hundred dollars a month or nine hundred dollars a month and you pay a thousand dollars a month to stay warm, you can't do it. And again, these are people that work their whole life that are just trying to eke out a living. And try to make it. If we can do something to help them, uh, we ought to get off our rear ends and be doing it. And that's what we're trying. That is what we're trying to get done. And it all comes down to how much interest is going to be involved. If we leave here, I think I just saw a county of 55 people here tonight. If we leave here and uh, and we have 55, it's going to be a bigger hill to climb than if it's 155. And uh, so you're not going to find us up here pulling against you trying to get this done. But we got to have y'all standing with us to try to get it done and to try to help us get the, the folks in there. Questions? I'm sure, some of us have questions. Mr. President, if you're not in the franchise area now, you've got enough signatures to sign up. What's the, I mean, what, people getting gas that's in the franchise area is one thing, they just folks that ain't in the franchise area. Yeah, it's a simple application process. The town will apply to the commission. But it's possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do it. We do it. I don't say we do it every month, but we, we do it quite often, uh, where there's people that come in to expand their territory. What we look at on that is, uh, yeah, before we give out, and this is just kind of brand impressions rule, okay? I ask you, I got that. Before we give you the right to be the only gas supplier or water or electricity or whatever the service is, before we give you that monopoly, because once you got it, see, nobody else can sell nothing out there to them. So that's a big trade-off. But once we, we want to see that there are plans in place to be doing it. I won't just give it in hopes that they do it. Uh, so we, we would work with the town on that. That's an application process. It's done quite often. I'm sure the commissioner, we won't ask to run out your direction if we don't have enough customers yeah. out there. I'm not even going to ask. It's kind of a chicken and egg kind yeah. of thing. 
Right. But, yes, sir. As far as application goes, that's something that we ran as commission. Uh, go through the process. They file it 20 days for anybody to do object. File an objection. If they object, we'd probably come up here and hold a hearing on it, rule on it quickly, and, and move on. But I'll be honest with you, 99.999% of the time, nobody objects to those type of things because nobody else wants to go out there and serve it. I had the commissioner come up, and he was good enough to come up a couple of weeks ago, and he facilitated this meeting by sending out letters, which all you received, I think. Uh, he had to decide on that, and he's had to decide, I think, to do that about two mailings, maybe. We put it in the paper. Uh, I thought there'd probably be 100 here tonight. There's still a great crowd, I'm proud. Everybody came. That shows a pretty good interest for the first meeting. Uh, but yeah, we're, we we're, we're trying to bound, bound, bound this thing, is what I'm trying to do, is make it go fast. But somewhere we're going to get a little stumbling block because... We're going to have to deal with the state government, not his office, but probably the state government at some point. It's like a snail problem if you're that one. I mean, they're not going to get in a hurry. They're going to take their time. Or some federal agencies, that's what's going to happen. I mean, we're still going to push. If it takes me calling them out about one or two times a week, I'll do it. I'll go visit them if I have to. I've done that before. I finally get tired of seeing them, they'll give us what they want, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I don't know where his office is. I give you my cell phone. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you one. Anyway. <clears throat> Any other questions? How far does the uh, franchise to Shemingo go south? Oh, uh, uh, we go down to Engineer. You may answer that better than I do. Uh, south of the right tracks. There, right there about the Eaton's where that road comes in from the right on the south, the south of the action tracks. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, around Mr. Wooten's house, is that the way below the Natchez Strait? It's down below Natchez Strait where that road, uh, the Neal Road comes back into Highway 25. Where it comes back into Highway 25 is about right there. So, I talked with Belmont, and uh, they said that their franchise only went up around Mr. Wooten's house. So that's, just a, that's about right. I, I don't know where Mr. Wooten lives. He's down the bottom of the hill. Down the bottom of the hill. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Belmont. And Peach Mango is not quite that far. So That's no man's land. Is there no man's land in between that? I, mean, I think so, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe, 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 I'm not sure. Something like that old joke you used to tell about the first one at the courthouse. Right. Whoever right. wants to serve, whoever can get out there to serve you first, you know, they have to come from blind us. They just can't come in our area, we can't go in their area. Yeah, right? I mean, no. yeah. <laughs> but we, I mean, we'd be willing to work with whoever. If they got plans to get you gas, we'll work with them. How far down 30 east is uh, nearly the Bear Creek. Not quite near. Not quite near. Not quite near. Right now. Well, yeah. you've got a lot of people here from Mingo. You've got a lot of people from Mingo. Just got to buy your house, get to Mingo, see? Yeah. So yeah. we've got enough little red dots down through here. I'm going to go visit him. I'm going to send him an uh, application, and we're going to come your way if, it, if it's feasible. How many do you need per mile, or how many do you need per distance? Travel or whatever. It all depends on what kind of topography, what, you know, we got to cross the creek to get, you know, to you, so that's another cost involved. It all depends on the cost estimate, the cost of the money, and then I got to go to James Tennyson and show him that from a money, from a financial standpoint, <laughs> that it'll work. Then I everybody here knows to James, James Tennyson. <laughs> that's pretty hard to prove to a James Tennyson. Y'all know how he is. So we got to prove it to him from a financial standpoint, and that's, and that's good. That's what we're supposed to do. Right. Yeah, and, there, there, money. And, and there's several layers of that because, as he said, then they got to go to the board, then they got to come to us. Yeah. To prove and, and I have to deal with who, who we borrow from. We got to be sure that we can pay the money back. You know, if we have down one road five people that want it, say within a, a mile, five want it, five don't want it, and just what if I want it just in case I run out of firewood? Yeah, and, and that's uh, that, that what if you may not get it, depending on the cost. Uh, we need everybody to use the gas. Because it's down 110. Do what? Down 110. Put on. That's uh. Can't road numbers not on there. No, can't road numbers not on there. Who is it? Let's turn down. Down to Tuffy's house down through there? Yeah. Uh, that's outside of That's area. outside our area, barely. But if there's enough red dots on there. I'll go put an application. Here, here's another thing. Enough y'all down there. Uh, yeah, I'll go. The whole I'll circle. Go I'll I'll go like, I think like the whole circle's here tonight, isn't it? Yeah. I believe we got just about everybody here. So. <laughs> I want to ask you one more time. That gas line is south of the National Trace now. 
Mm-mm. No, 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 we're north. We're north of Trace. This is one place we're looking at. Is right south of Trace. If you go past the Trace, you're gonna have to get permit to go past. We've already mm-hmm. caught the Trace. We've already caught the Trace. Yeah. About crossing every. We we can go under the Trace. We can sell M dot. He'll have to answer that question. He talked to them. He's he's dealt with M dot. Yeah, I've dealt with Trace too. And I'm <coughs> around the Trace. Time, you know, uh, we can work with them pretty easy, no problem. Yes, sir. Okay, where the cut off line is. That's at the end of my property. And if it loosens and then gets that, and there's two houses on that road, but Belmont has that, and if they take the natural gas there, and what you're saying is Belmont <coughs> didn't serve as mine, it would have to be Tishomingo, right? Tishomingo could release you to Belmont. Or they could release, we, we could release you, or they could release you either one. Either one. We, we, we can work out a swap there. Yes, yeah. sir. There's a swap. We can work a swap. Right. That's right. <laughs> they, can, they can release you from their territory or they can release you. Yeah. Or maybe they had three or four houses I wanted. Mm-hmm. But they wasn't going to well, serve. We, like, sure, we thought we were getting it from Belmont. You know, well, we thought we That's when they were going to end the on their territory. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'll get you knew about that. Anyway, there's a way to swap. But there's a way to swap. There's a way to swap. There's a way to swap. It wasn't Belmont's fault. It's in there. Do what now? How long has the franchise on us been in this area? Before my time, I'm sure. I know it's wrong before that. Now this this franchise area has only been expanded once, hasn't it? Just once, yeah. I don't know what when that expanded water. And, and that was started in like 70, 77, 78, 79, so about. Oh, that's going to be more than one year. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never thought about natural gas, so I'm paying the price of what I'm paying now. And believe it or not, <coughs> we didn't have near the folks calling and asking for it until propane prices did what they did. And, so it, and it's shown us a need out there. And to me, take it, take it just a minute up one level, not just talk about this thing. I think about it statewide. I mean, I go back to the poorest state in the United States of America as far as income. And we're able to do something to lower that cost of living across Mississippi. That is good for our state. It's something we need to, and so this is a part of that puzzle. But what you're bringing up, ma'am, is something that I dare say in all 82 counties of the state that this issue really got highlighted when the price went up. We had such a cold winter, and it's a chance for us to do something about it uh, now. One thing I failed to mention a minute ago that the mayor and I talked about, and uh, I know y'all understand this, and some of this also is not just saying, hey, I want gas. And that's one thing. That's our first way to plan. That's our first way to look at where to put those red dots on the map and figure out where it should go. But at some point, what we had talked about was that they're potential customers and they've got to go borrow this money. That lending agency is going to look at, are you in fact going to sign up? And what we've done in other places is have a contract. Well, the contract, once there's a set cost about it, on a limit, <coughs> this, is, this is third base. But go on and tell you about it. That where you would sign a contract agreeing to take gas at a certain time and become a full gas customer so that they can have the assurance that enough people are going to sign up. Because I know it's a bloody night, but we have people that show up and say, yeah, I want gas. And then the time it gets ran down the road, they say, well, never mind. You can't do business that way because you can't plan and you can't figure out how to pay the money back uh, without doing it. So that may be something, again, that's third base stuff. We're not even first base, but that is something to be thinking about that uh, is a way in which to kind of get some skin in the game for the people wanting the gas to show the fact that they do it. We're doing that right now in Abbeville, a uh, little town north of Oxford. In Abbeville, if we get 111 people, I think, to sign their contract that they'll take gas within a year that it's put on the pipeline, then they're gonna be able to get that the gas. For, and now this figure will may not hold at all. It may be more, it may be less, but this is the figure for Abbeville, $224 an hour. If they don't take gas within a year, then they owe Center Point Gas Company $2,800 up front. And that's, that is a way because the gas companies ran the lines, and when they choose not to hook it up, they still got to pay. If you hook up, you go through with your end of the bargain, you get gas at around $224 a house, which is a steal. Uh, if you don't, then you pay the penalty and have to pay all the upfront costs again. Just trying to balance out the folks that are getting the service and committed to be a customer so that they can find it. Now, I know a lot of these people's on, you use totally electric. I don't know about wood, but let's say totally electric or propane. 
We're not going to tell you yet because I don't know. The commissioner, uh, we, we're talking about thinking outside the box. He's got some more investigating to do. Uh, he hasn't told me if he's found out. Uh, without saying too much, we're probably looking at some type of incentives, maybe, uh, to maybe convert one way or another, but that's maybe second base or third base, who knows. But you know, you would maybe it won't be dead expense. But if it is dead expense, a lot of times you're gonna get your money back the first winter anyway. But also there might be other incentives there. And if yeah, we just don't know the answers to those yet. So that they will tell hopefully. It may die in the water, we don't know. We have some work to do on that. What well, we can do is we're gonna try. try. Yeah, we're gonna try. try to find a way to make it work. And try to make this work. I'd like to have one more thing. Uh, it's July now. It's going to get cold in about three or four months. That's hard to believe. So go ahead and book your propane if you're on propane. I think gas ain't going to be to you this winter. It ain't going to happen that quick. So cut your trees or whatever you're going to do to eat your house. Go ahead and do it. Because we're, it's, 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 it's several steps, like the commissioner said. So we've got to get a lot of approvals. We've got to get financed. We've got to see if it works first base. So. Go ahead and take care of this winter. Now. What would be a good day to set this would be the main main event? Um, morning, maybe? Yeah, yeah. What we're talking about is just a date in which we can all kind of gather back up and see how many people have called express interest in it. You know, as many people by September the first, if we regroup September the first September the first, the three of us, and see here we got 155, 255 people. We just didn't have a date in which you tell your neighbors they got to get their name in a call and express interest by September 1st. Because so September 1st, we're going to look at it. We're not going to throw your names in the trash if we don't have the right number. We're no. going to keep them. But we just need, at some point, we need to look at it and see this is how many folks we've got and how many folks are interested. So please carry that word back with you uh, to your folks who live around you and let them know that we need them to call the city hall and express interest. Appreciate y'all coming out and visiting. Right. 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 Should have done it years ago. It just wasn't feasible for us to do it. State of Mississippi would have been State of Mississippi would have been doing this seven years. Yeah. This should have been. This is, should have been a priority in our state a long time ago. And I just turned 38 years old today, so I don't bear all the blame for all that. I wasn't, I wasn't around. But we're responsible for the time in which we got power to do something about it, and we're going to go to church on track. <laughs> If we can try to make it work, so we'll try to get there. Any more questions? Sure, there'll be something else. What if uh, I get one of those blank sheets to I just bring you six years off there, though? If I go by and get it back, that'll work. That'll work. We'll get some blank sheets if you want blank sheets. Just, just stress to them that, you know, just right. stress to them that I'm we're going to have them as a customer, not the what it is. Because if we bring everybody back together and on your road, there's 10 of you again, and only two or three won't gas. Right. That's, that's something we'll have to cross when, when we get to it. It may be still cheap, cheap enough to do it, but it may not. The more we have commitments, the better off we are, the better off you are. More questions? Thank you, everybody. For, huh? Yeah, she's got them back here. Call Jones. Call Jones. Yeah, call Jones. If you call City Hall, just ask for Jones. That's her right back there. She wants to get up here and speak. She ain't really grinning about that. She didn't She was a utility clerk and complaint woman. Anyway, thank everyone for coming. You'll be contacted again. And I'd like to thank the commissioner for coming and the engineer for coming. I believe we have a local newspaper and local TV channel. Thank you for coming and covering Y'all help us spread. We want to get the word out uh, that we're proposing to put natural gas to as many people that we can put it to with the money we're going to get. Let's say it like that because I don't even know how much money we're asking for yet. I've been asked and I shot them a figure and they called me back and said, we're allocating that much because at the end of the year it's coming up. That's not saying they're actually giving it to us. So we've got a lot of hurdles to go through when we're setting them aside. Uh, so, thanks again. And thank the commissioner. Thank the engineer. Thank you, folks, again. Thank y'all, man. You got any questions? Call us. Thank, thank you. Thank y'all.